So now it's my great honor to introduce Dr. Stephen Chu, the United States Secretary of the Department of Energy. Thank you, Dr. Chu, for being here at the ACB meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the U.S. Secretary of Energy and Nobel Laureate, Dr. Stephen Chu. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Um, uh, it's, uh, if there's a, any little warts in the talk, I have to confess that I, I've been preparing it as you were walking in the room. Um, anyway, uh, so now I'm going to go to some very recent work. Um, this is my last postdoc when I became Secretary of Energy. I had a, a group of a, roughly 15 or so, and it takes a while to, you know, have them finish their work and published and so although it looks like I'm working uh, I can assure all the taxpayers in this room that the first 75 hours of my week go to the Department of Energy <laughs> and uh, this is done at weekends and in nights at really strange hours of the day so this is Vassell Burke who happens to be sitting in the audience uh, and I'm going to tell you about some recent work he's done and continuing to do and it has to do with visualizing biofilms so what's a biofilm if you have individual bacteria and they land on a surface, they can, in fact, form a colony. And this colony uh, is called a biofilm, and they, these bacteria excrete proteins, uh, polymers, and these proteins and polymers actually protect the bacteria from reactions to uh, host invasion. So suppose you get invaded by some uh, bacteria and wants to form a biofilm, you will generate antibodies and all sorts of things that will try to eat these bacteria. And uh, this is one example. This is a, uh, a type of white blood cell, a phagocyte, uh, that happens to be eating uh, an anthrax bacilli. Uh, and so it's engulfing them, and it digests it, and spits out the little pieces. And the bacteria is rendered um, with, well, fundamentally dead. So, so the biofilms will actually erect these barriers and a community to protect themselves against this biological warfare. Other things where you find biofilms on the bottoms of uh, uh, boats, uh, they form these very, very tough uh, scaly things that um, degrade, they drag on the, uh, the vessel. Um, they can degrade the fuel efficiency by 20 percent and it's a multi-billion dollar business a year in the United States just to scrape this stuff off the bottoms of ships, which has to be done in dry dock. Very tough stuff. Finally, um, understanding biofilms can actually help us make potentially a new class of biofuels. And to that, I show you this uh, picture of, you know, if you're a homeowner, uh, this is really disturbing. These are wood termites. And uh, wood termites use wood, they eat it, and they use it as bioenergy. Now, if we ate wood, it would not be not only very appetizing, it wouldn't be very nutritious. We just pass it through our system. And so these wood turbines actually have developed the ability to digest this very tough woody material and turn it into biofuel for their own use. But in fact, they don't use it, turn that um, woody material themselves. They have a lot of help. And if this is the gut of a termite, and if you look inside the gut of a termite, you find bacterial colonies in the form of biofilms. And these biofilms actually break down the woody cellulose material and turn it into a digestible form that the termite can use. So the termite shreds it with the mandibles, but then the bacteria do a lot of the chemical work. And so it's understanding biofilms have all these applications. Now, our approach to biofilms is very simple. We took inspiration from the great American philosopher of the 20th century. In case you're wondering who that is, that happens to be Yogi Berra. Uh, Yogi Berra is having a philosophical conversation over on the right. And uh, he said many very wise things. He said, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. Uh, he, he said, uh, predictions are hard to make, especially about the future. But at this particular uh, wise saying is, you can observe a lot by just watching. So this is what we want to do. We just want to watch with higher resolution. So here's, pretend you, here's a bacterial cell or any kind of cell. And you have these fluorescent dye molecules by these red stars and you want to identify particular proteins or polysaccharides. So you develop an antibody 
that will uh, stick onto a particular protein. But when these, this assembly is actually in solution, they kind of move around and diffuse around very rapidly. And because they're diffusing around very rapidly, what your camera ends up seeing is a blurred, fuzzy, dim picture of this. However, if this fluorescent molecule with this antibody happens to attach to a cell which is on the surface, it becomes unmobilized. You have a single dot of light which you can find the center of with high precision. So you see out of this very faint blur, you see these little points of light lighting up. And so that's what Vassell has done. And so this is a movie. The, we start with a confocal microscope movie of a biofilm. This is a normal microscope picture of biofilms growing on a surface. And you see how these films establish themselves and grow. And he's now scanning up uh, in the microscope and seeing um, how thick they are and all these other things. So now we're going to go to uh, looking at uh, this movie, but in slow motion, and looking at its symbol also in three dimensions. And because we can actually identify different proteins and polysaccharides, uh, we can actually form these three-dimensional images of uh, many of the components of the biofilm as well as uh, the bacteria themselves. And so in this animation of the data, what you see is, as you zoom in, as this growing biofilm structure is a beginning biofilm structure, and you see the blue are the cells. Uh, you see, for example, in the red, uh, these are shell proteins that actually make this. There's also proteins that act as cements or glue for this object. And then finally, there are other proteins, the green colored stuff, that actually establishes the biofilm locally. And so you can actually make these three-dimensional pictures. They're really movies. So for the first time, we now are able to see live biofilms growing in pretty good resolution. But let me show you what you can learn by just watching. If you look at a cross-section of these biofilms, you see that, well, there are clusters over here, and there are these little spaces. And so we're conjecturing that these spaces and channels and grooves are actually regions where nutrients can diffuse in to feed these individual cells, and waste products can diffuse out. So this is your primitive circulatory system. And um, we're trying to do an experiment. I don't know when it's going to be done. You can maybe diffuse in molecules, use a laser, cross-link them, and cut off the circulation channels and see if it kills the biofilm. That would be big news for medicine, because that's a way of actually killing these biofilms. Antibiotics, antibodies do not work. Uh, but it can have a lot of other applications. Let's go to super resolution. If you use a conventional optical microscope, and this is a 200 nanometer bar, you'll see a blur circle, something like this. This is what you see of a single bacteria excreting these biofilm proteins. Again, it's a movie, but this is a still of that movie. Okay? And then you can magnify in that dotted line box, and you see uh, with, again, 200 nanometer bar, you see actually really exquisite resolution, something on the order of 15 nanometers, again, of a growing live biofilm. And you can make a three-dimensional image of that, live and growing. So this is very, very exciting. And uh, the next step uh, in my former group uh, if, is to actually apply this to live um, cells.